All right, guys. Uh, this is to answer a question that I get asked over and over again on my uh, one of my older videos on this particular little uh, firearm, this little uh, screw barrel Derringer, so to, so to speak. Uh, I just call it my screw barrel. But over and over, I get concerns and worries and comments on how dangerous this gun is and this is mostly my opinion so take everything I say again as I always say with a grain of salt in other words uh, use your own judgment on it and uh, do your own research and see what you think of uh, what I'm saying here uh, the, the big concern that I get on this firearm is the process of loading it and uh, I show that in a video I'll put a link to that video uh, down below is how it's loaded uh, with the with the firearm half cock of course we pour our powder charge now all these guns are loaded as, as always I'll pour my powder charge in here and I make sure I have enough of a powder charge and I demonstrate that in my my video let me get a little pointer here and we want the powder to the base of where the bullet sets in fact I level that out if not have it humped up just a small amount I fired this gun I don't know how many times and never had a problem with it I might say and then you place the ball on top of that the barrel is screwed down in place and by having that powder uh, level with the bottom of the ball or actually just a hair higher and I have that measured out I believe I'd have to look at my my notes but I as I do every time before I go out firing it to know and I have nipples on my uh, uh, powder uh, flasks that match the charges for each of these guns and I just fill it up with I believe it's seven grains or so of powder it's not that critical on this firearm just so you have enough in the ball to compress it um, black powder needs to be compressed and compressed firmly settled and compressed in cartridge guns particularly to eliminate danger of you creating a pipe bomb if you have an air gap in your black powder you're gonna have a pipe bomb and then you screw the barrel on, on in place and what happens is you screw it into place there's a little uh, forcing cone so to speak it's not actually a forcing cone but it's the beginning of the, the lands and grooves in the barrel um, the, the rifling in other words the that's just ahead of the threads on it when you screw it into place that will contact your ball before you get it uh, seated then you continue to seat it as far as you can and then you use this wrench it engages with the rifling in the uh, the firearm and you continue to screw it down and that compacts the ball firmly against your uh, powder and you're just starting to engage the rifling too on the in the barrel then and only then you cap it use a capper some you can use your fingers but I don't normally recommend that I would use a capper and put a cap on that then when you cock it of course this one the trigger folds down and we're ready to fire only at that point are we ready to fire well the great concern comes at this operation here when we are trying to um, load the firearm and there are two questions that have been brought up one is you're having to place your hand over the muzzle and you're actually placing something in the muzzle in order to tighten this down isn't that a danger and the reason that would be dangerous is you are what if you had some spare powder down here and you were crushing it in the threads with and causing that to ignite well I've tried I've formed this experiment myself I've taken a small amount just a not even a thimble full just the tiniest few grains of black powder so for safety's sake place them on an anvil in this case it was a railroad tie 
took a hammer, a brass hammer, and struck it as hard as I could with that brass hammer trying to get it to ignite. So the crush, and I never could, so the crush resistance of black powder to for going off is extremely high. Uh, the, the, I couldn't do it. I switched to a steel on steel hammer and still could not get it to ignite. Now the only way that would have ignited was if I had used a uh, or cr created a spark or used something that like a um, piece of rock against the steel particularly flint to create that spark then it would have gone off of course that's exactly how a flint lock works uh, and my point is, is this is really no more dangerous than many other black powder guns uh, some of the uh, I've got several out here to demonstrate that of course uh, the most basic style would be a flint lock and if we bring a flint lock in here when we load these flint locks the gun first of all is placed on half cock now as soon as we fire these guns normally you want to blow down the barrel that does two things once it you can use a blow tube on the end of the barrel down the end of the barrel and uh, blow on it that way uh, the old timers and the way I was taught you just put your lips right up to it and blow that's generally not considered that safe anymore due to the fact that you can uh, introduce lead into your body which is obviously not a good thing and uh, I've done did that method for years and years and years I now use a blow tube uh, but I are okay I think uh, I stumble with my speech every once in a while but that's because uh, I'm just not a very good public speaker it has nothing to do with my brain function uh, and that's my story and I'm going to stick with it but the two things it does is uh, as I said introduces moisture into the barrel which softens the fouling makes loading easier and uh, helps blow some of that fouling out the next following shot the second thing it does is it helps eliminate embers that might be still present in the chamber or the barrel as you will of the gun these are actually don't really have a chamber so that's the most important part is to not have an ember present because you do want gum, uh, black powder to have a compaction to it in order to be safe uh, modern powders of course you can have some airspace in them and they are just fine with that they burn at a much slower controlled rate black powder is a very flash uh, type of ignition and uh, to contain that as you compact it it eliminates that flash to some degree and forces it to slow down and it's burning now of course again this is all my opinion on it uh, from what I've done from research and studying on it but to load this gun it's really similar in that you got to have your hand in front of the muzzle of course the ball is the powder is placed down in a patch there's no patch used on this one, but a uh, the powder is placed in a patch and a ball follows, and you have to put your hand over it. And of course, you're obviously going to use your hand when you drive your ball down in with your ramrod. And then, of course, only then with it on half cock, you fill the the pan with a little bit of uh, priming powder. Close the the frizz in there and then you're ready to go to half cock and fire when you're pointed down range or at your target pull the trigger of course creates spark knocks the frizz in out of the way and through the little flash hole will ignite the powder so only then will it ignite it and that's very safe of course there have been accidents um, in fact in Scotland I witnessed a, uh, a flash firing because he was doing a rapid fire sequence demonstrating that uh, I can't recall if it was with his match lock or with his flint lock um, and during that uh, rapid firing cycle he was not blowing the barrel down just reloading firing as quick as he can to demonstrate the firing capabilities between the two firearms and he uh, poured his powder charge down it and it went off in his face 
and of course he didn't have a ball loaded but as soon as he dropped that powder charge and he was using uh it wasn't loading from a flask so there was no danger of the flask going off and of course bottom flasks have a barrel or a, a, a spring loaded division between your main powder charge and your uh, nipple charge normally they say load them load these guns from a, a secondary source such as a an old shell casing where they make powder measures that are independent where you pour it from your flask and then pour it into the barrel and that eliminates that but again that's from a live spark uh, the man was not harmed and uh, he was using paper cartridges as I said uh, biting off the end of the paper cartridge dumping the powder down throwing the, bo the ball in if he had a ball which he was not shooting balls at that time and then it's ramrodded down in but as soon as he dumped the powder in it flashed and gave a kind of an impressive smoke of uh, display uh, the next type of course in progression is the percussion firearm it's loaded almost identically to the to the flintlock in that on half cock you fired for instance and once you fired you blow the barrel down and that moisturizes the powder fouling and gets rid of the uh, any embers that might be present uh, generally we're a little safer on our firearms shooting at range we'll let it set for a while too to make certain no embers have gone uh, in old cannons they would swab it with a uh, wet swab in order to do two things again add moisture and eliminate any fouling and to help clean the barrel out a little and then also kill any live embers that might be going off because you're going to be standing right in front of the cannon same effect only worse you're fully standing in front of the cannon in order to load it well this one we of course pour our powder in uh, it doesn't go off flash off then you're probably good to go uh, it's a very rare thing to have that happen but it does uh, all firearms are inherently dangerous and black powder adds a little bit of uh, another step to that and danger in that uh, yeah you are working in front of the muzzle and if you don't use your head and get rid of those embers and follow careful techniques you can get a flash off there but that's the worst that will happen in that case the, of course the patch and the barrel put in ramrodded down make sure you get it tight against the powder so you don't have the air gap creating a bomb then finally the capper is placed on and we cock it and fire it of course again talking about crushing the black powder in the threads in a firearm such as this uh, the same effect can happen here because to load a revolver of course with it on half cock we really can't blow it down there's six cylinders here you normally the wait time would be enough to uh, make it safe and ready to fire uh, but we do use a ramrod but this ramrod is right here mounted on the gun and we're using steel against steel we can hit the edge of the cylinder as we load it uh, the powder is poured in with it on half cock no nipple or no uh, cap on the nipple the powder is loaded in the ball or uh, bullet is placed on top um, some of these you can use paper cartridges too. insert the paper cartridge and it's all in one unit uh, I normally put a wad on top of my powder charge, a greased wad, then the ball, just to help fouling and safety. The ramrod is lowered, and then, of course, there may be powder in there too. You're you jamming that ball down, make sure you get it good and tight against the powder, and of course, you can drag this against powder or scrape it. You're absolutely crushing powder on this type of firearm right in between that cylinder and ramrod steel on steel uh, the greatest danger from these is not from loading them however it's after you've capped it cocked it and you're ready to fire uh, 
the additional step to prevent what we call a chain fire, of course, is to grease the top of each cylinder. With the wad in there, it greatly helps that. But there could be a trail of powder going bound between your bullet, clear past your wad, clear into your charge. And when you fire a round off, of course, you get this flash between the cylinder and the barrel, the forcing cone. And that flash can go to, into your next chamber. And if you have that excess powder in there, it can cause a chain fire. So greasing the tops of each cylinder helps eliminate that chain fire. That's the next additional uh, place of danger on one of these guns. But then again, on a revolver, then again, we're not worried about crushing the powder. It's just black powder is extremely resilient in its ability to avoid that crushing ability or impact ability when you load it. It simply is not one of our greatest concerns. As you can see, the care that it must be taken in other areas of the firearm. And of course, the third type of, uh, I don't have like a match lock or anything here. They have their own dangers when you have a lit match around your uh, black powder at all times. Uh, and by match, it's a slow match. It's a basically a fuse that burns very, very slowly. And that would be in place of your uh, flintlock. You have a large affair with that slow fuse constant, constantly burning. You give it a little blow on it to get it glowing when you're loaded and ready to fire. Cock it, give it a little blow, and you're ready to pull the trigger, and that match will fall down in. And there's considerable delay before the ignition well i shouldn't say considerable it's probably faster than actually a flint lock a match lock is uh from the demonstrations i saw on that it was an extremely fast action not as fast as a percussion but very fast and of course the cartridge firearm which of course is a completely different scenario too and this is a conversion here uh with a cartridge firearm it's just like any other cartridge firearm the only additional step in a rifle will blow down we we'll use a blow tube in the chamber to blow the cylinders down and or blow the the chamber down and the uh, the barrel to soften the the fouling in it there really there's no chance of setting a cartridge gun off well I shouldn't say no chance there's always a chance of something going wrong um, but this cartridge gun, of course, is it's a Remington based on, uh, we just lower this, we can pop the pin out, and out falls the cylinder. And the cylinder is loaded by just popping off the back, and you load your cartridges in, 45 Colt in this case. And then this has a, an aligning pin, drops back in. We have six uh, firing pins on it as you can see each chamber has its own firing pin so and they of course ignite the primer which sets off the black powder charge completely contain of course as all modern cartridges are this is the only additional thing is these would have black powder in them uh, you can see again too why it might be a good idea to carry this gun with an empty chamber uh, with the hammer down it's going to be pushing on this nipple any drop if you drop it or accidentally hit that hammer and it wouldn't take that much you would uh, drive the primer right into the uh, into the cartridge primer or rather drive the firing pin into the cartridge primer so very good idea to carry these guns just as you would a, a Colt with the firing pin on the hammer in uh, an unloaded state on one of the chambers. In this case, the uh, the pin is held in place with a uh, by the ramrod itself. Uh, if, if if this was a black powder firearm or a uh, if I took this conversion cylinder out rather it is a black powder firearm if I took that out but if it was a standard configuration it would work in the same way 
that we would uh, to to load the firearm. There we go. Yeah. We would load it in the exact same manner as the previous revolver, and uh, then cap it. But with this conversion cylinder, of course, we don't have to do that. Uh, this is the Remington style. And of course, it's the Colt style here. Would require a little more work if we put a conversion cylinder in it, these open open top Colts, because this wedge has to be driven out in order to uh, remove the cylinder pin. Once it's uh, once you drive that wedge out then the cylinder pin or the cylinder whole cylinder can be removed at that point so anyway there we have it uh, we've been crushing black powder for many years as you can see on all these types of different firearms just wanted to demonstrate a few of the different actions so is that a concern with me on this firearm uh, absolutely not I don't have a concern with this firearm going off uh, other than perhaps having a flash fire again when I'm loading it no nipple or no cap on the nipple drop your powder in if you have a spark in there yes you could get a flash there that's probably the most dangerous point crushing the powder black powder simply is very crush resistant and I have no worries about loading it in this manner and I've never had an accident and I've only seen that one flash fire firing off in in past history so there we have it my opinion on it yeah it's fine you aren't gonna have problems just use your head a little make sure you're uh, fully aware of what you're doing fully educated on what you're doing and loading with the proper powder again don't use modern powders in a black powder gun you will hurt yourself and be safe thanks for watching